At this point on Here and Now, we would like you to use your imagination and travel back to there and then. Specifically, we're taking you back to the corner of Bathurst and Bloor 100 years ago, October of 1905. Back then, of course, radio was the medium of choice. And had you been listening to a very early version of Go To It, the event of the evening would have been the opening of a new vaudeville theater in the area. It was called The Madison. In 1941, when film became the hot new thing, the theater kept up with the times. It became a cinema. And had there been a newsreel to mark the occasion, it might have sounded like this. This. Of modern design is new theater. Special attractions for opening of the Midtown at Glore and Bathurst. A new chapter in Toronto's theatrical history will be marked tomorrow with the opening of the new Midtown Theater at Glore and Bathurst Streets in the heart of the city's Midtown District. The new theater is of modern design, fireproof, and with the latest and most comfortable in physical equipment. The house is air conditioned and seats 1,125 persons. The seating including 250 lounge and 250 balcony seats. An undistorted view of the RCA magic screen is provided and unmatched acoustical properties. Opening night, 35 cents. Spoking lounge, 10 cents extra. Now, you could smoke there, and it was only 35 cents. I thought it was also interesting the fact that they advertised that it's uh, fireproof and that Midtown is actually on Bloor Street. It shows you how the city's expanded. A little snippet of history there uh, from 1941, a place known variously over the past century as the Madison, the Eden, and today... The Bloor Cinema. Now, that was not a real newsreel clip, uh, but one imagined up by a team of young filmmakers who've made a documentary short about the movie House. Peter Koplowski, Robin Sharp, and Cooper Sanborn are the film students at U of T, York, and Ryerson, respectively. They've come together to create a short film about the Bloor Cinema. It will be shown at the theater's 100th birthday party this Sunday. Peter and Robin are with me in the studio. Hello to you both. Hey, how you doing? Hello. I'm well, thanks. Um, you guys are, are much younger than, than the Bloor Cinema. <laughs> uh, yeah, safe to say. Uh, what what what's your relationship to the Bloor, Peter? Why don't you start? Uh, well, we both work there, and I've been uh, working there for about a year this month, so it's an anniversary for me as well. And um, we both love the theater a lot. We love these old time theaters. We go to them more often than we do uh, the Paramount downtown, like the big megaplexes. We just like the atmosphere at these theaters and you don't get the same type of atmosphere you get in a multiplex. What, what is it about the atmosphere, Robin, that, that, that is so different? Well, I guess uh, one thing is you can afford everything. It's um, <laughs> oh, one, <laughs> one amazing thing about, about the theater is, uh, I mean, it's the, it's the cheapest prices in Toronto, I think for admission and for concessions. So that, that always, you know, perks up my atmosphere anyway. But, uh, you know, it has, it, it is, a, it's a lovely old building. And, uh, you know, quite beautiful. And, uh, you know, especially it's, it's, believe me, it's much more lovely than steel and glass, which is what all the new ones are made of. And it's a movie theater first. It's not a movie theater and a cafe and somewhere you can take your dry cleaning and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's meant to go and see movies. Yeah, exactly. And my, 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 the person who runs it, Paul uh, Bornero, uh, his favorite aspect of theater is probably one of my favorite aspects, and it's the curtain. Most movie theaters don't use the curtain anymore and because they want to make the screen really big, so right. it fills up the space where a curtain would go. And so the fact that it has a curtain that you go in, you don't see any ads immediately. You just see a curtain, and then it rises, and then the movie starts. I remember I think the old perfect. days when they used to play O Canada, and we'd all stand up. And yeah, that's one of the things we that. found in researching. <laughs> yeah, they used to play O Canada, and the inspectors made sure that every theater played O Canada. It was one of the checklists. What else did you find out about, about the Bloor? Tell me a bit about the history of uh, the theater. Um, well, uh, the most interesting stuff we found out was that there were a lot of disputes in the 40s between the management of the Bloor and the inspectors. Um, basically, what, what always seemed to happen was they, they would have a standing policy. Basically, 65 people were allowed in a lobby at one time, and they often exceeded it by 200 people. And so inspectors, <laughs> <laughs> inspectors would constantly uh, get in there and you know, tell the management, we're going to shut you down or stop admitting that many people. Uh, and Robin's got some other. Well, I mean, there was um, there was all sorts of uh, violations. Uh, but it sounds as though it's evolved over the time. I mean, if it started out as as a vaudeville kind of theater and it became right. a movie theater, it uh, it I think it slowly became a movie theater. I think they played silent films there, um, uh, likely in the in the twenties into the thirties, and then by the thirties it it was a lot of a lot of film and then some vaudeville and then that's when they made the change in uh, 1941 completely redid the place and it's it's not a place that shows 
first first run movies, but the movies that you see, I mean, it's it's a repertory cinema, but the movies that you see will eventually in, on the big screens will eventually make it there. Yeah, it's a second run cinema now. Back then, it probably was doing like first run. It was a classy theater in the '40s. It was like the place to go. It yeah. was a huge, classy place, and people went there all the time. And actually, one of the reasons why uh, it became the Midtown was because of uh, a renov- they had to renovate because people it was a really popular theater and it was just wasn't up to par with expectations and so they had to make it better for the demanding audience hasn't always been uh, grand times at the Bloor. I I've <laughs> only lived in Toronto I haven't lived in Toronto that long not a hundred years certainly uh, and I do remember that it, it's been threatened to close a couple of times yeah um, anyways I'm definitely sure. yeah um. <laughs> well in the 70s something interesting happened to it that almost caused it and in the end it, it closed after a while. It was well. It became a porn theater. <laughs> it was um, a porn theater in the which 70s. you know in the Lascivia seventies. Um, I guess a lot of the old theaters became porn theaters. Um, you know, trying to compete, I guess, with the multiplexes. But you know, it was uh, you know in the same neighborhood as the Metro. And I guess, you know, the two were rivals, and I guess the Metro won. <laughs> yeah, it got shut down in the end, and it wasn't until um, the Festival Cinema Group, um, along with the Bordenero family, uh, like bought it and started it up again. And then ultimately, the Bordenero family uh, bought it. Uh, basically, the Festival Cinemas was going to let it go, and it was just going to close down again because it just wasn't doing well. And then the Bordenero family came in, fixed it up, redid everything. Uh, it ha- used to have like a really uh, sort of ugly wallpaper, made it all nice red and yellow color scheme, fixed the sound, got a better sound equipment, and now it's fantastic. It- there, there. Th- this is an era in which people don't go to the big old time movie theaters anymore. They just release the iPod, so you can watch movies on <laughs> on, on your on your screen. Um, and people download movies and watch them at home. Watch them on portable DVD players. Who is going to 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 the blue? Are people uh, uh, your age going a lot? Do you find or like you guys work there? Who do you see? We do work here. Uh, well, I notice um, uh, definitely. I do a lot of matinee shows, and uh, the matinee shows is an older audience. I have to say, and. Uh, as well, it's always sort of funny um, seeing them trying to open the huge metallic doors that they put in 1941, <laughs> these like wonderful doors. But anyway, um, so uh, to the matinees, it's it's an older crowd. But generally, when you get to uh, to rent seven and nine, you actually do get a lot of young people. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're playing movies like Brothers Grimm and well, we're playing Star movies Wars. like we play Rocky Horror almost every other month. And Dark, That's the great Dark Side of Oz, which is uh, Wizard of Oz synced up to Dark Side of the Moon, and so we get a huge uh, crowd of like teenagers. So, uh, usually, every time we do do those shows, we're sold out, and the candy line doesn't stop. It's just candy line from beginning <laughs> to the show to the end. The, is that enough to sustain the Bloor? A hundred years is a long time for a theater to be around, and as you mentioned, there's the Paramount and and the Octoplex that's at you know the top of the city. Whatever gigantic <laughs> cinema you can imagine, is the cinema. Uh, at Bloor and Bathurst going to be around another 100 years? Well, you know, the whole industry is in a slump right now, like you said, because of the iPods and the DVDs. People just wait for the DVD. People download the movies. But I think, I don't know, we think we have a good repertoire. Mm-hmm. Or, like, we show we show enough, uh, like, obscure films, and we do a lot of festivals. And the festivals, I think that's what's really important. A lot of theaters don't, a lot of uh, festivals don't have venues, mm-hmm. and the Bloor provides a venue to get these small festivals out. Like, the bigger ones might use the Paramount, but they're small festivals, and when they get started, they start at the Bloor. That's right. Well, uh, you know, and a lot of the a lot of the bigger festivals started at the Bloor as well. Like, um, what was it Midnight Madness? Of course, uh, yeah. yeah. First started at the Bloor Cinema, but uh, balcony or the main floor? Uh, balcony. Balcony. Or... <laughs> which uh, the balcony's best? Is it? Not? Mm, I I actually like the main floor, but the balcony's really fun with a lot of people because usually you won't bother anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you can the... take over a few yeah. rows and have a good time. And the love seats. You gotta love the love seats. We got love seats up in the balcony, so that's the best part. You're not gonna find that at your local uh, multiplex. No. Uh, thanks for coming in, guys. All right. Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you very much, Peter Koplowski and uh, Robin Sharp, film students who have put together this film marking uh, the Bloor Cinema and its 100th anniversary. The film will be screened at the Bloor Cinema's birthday party, which is happening this Sunday at 4.30 p.m.